y'all. Happy Thursday. Sorry, I'm a few minutes late. Um, uh, Lula TV was trolling me, and I had to restart my entire computer. So that is why I am a few minutes late. Hi, TJ. How you doing, beautiful? Um, happy Thursday. Uh, hi, Purdy Brown Earth thing. How are you, my dear? Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to MPL Legal Dish. Yes, I'm running a little bit behind a few minutes, but I'm still going to give you guys time to um, come on into the room. I'm going to give you guys till about 6.10. In the meantime, I'm going to let you guys know a couple of things. So if you have not been watching recently, we have switched to a new, a new format. Uh, we are now on five days a week, but the episodes are 20 minutes long. Um, they're still going to be housed on YouTube. Hello, WJB team. The episodes are still going to be housed on YouTube as always. They're just going to be a little shorter. The reason why I decided to switch to the new format is because someone suggested that I go live every day and I did a poll and people actually really like the idea of me being on every day, but because I don't want it to be hour long episodes every day, cause girl, I be tired. Um, we're doing them for 20 minutes and this also allows us to focus on fewer stories and really get our questions out so we cover about two to three stories per episode and you know we really kind of get into the meat of what is going on um okay so if you are new here i'm natalie pierre lewis owner and operator of mpl consulting llc hello escatit um, I'm going to go into what that means in a few minutes. Actually, we're gonna we're gonna start at six oh eight. Wait, I started at six oh four. Let me get through six oh seven. We're gonna get started in one minute, okay? But um, yeah. So I'm Natalie Pierre Lewis, owner of MPL Consulting LLC, a business formation firm. We're gonna talk about that in a second. This is my daily now daily uh, live show where we learn business and legal concepts using celebrity and pop culture news. We talk about Cardi B. We talk about clothing brands. We talk about um, models. We talk about whatever is in the pop culture that has to do that can teach you about business. We talk about it. OK, um, yeah. So at 607, I'm going to ask you to share this out to your um, people's um also we have a, a new sponsor today we had a sponsor yesterday and we got a new one today i'm very happy about that um and we're gonna go over that in a little bit um yes but uh i've really um okay so it is 607 guys i want you to share this out to your network share this out to whoever you think might need this a family member a friend a pastor uh you know that your co-worker who you can't stand who you want to leave the job <laughs> send it to somebody okay all right welcome 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 everybody happy thursday welcome to npl legal dish this is my now daily uh broadcast for uh those of you who just came on in uh where we learn business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. If this is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice, I am Natalie Pierre Lewis. I'm the owner and operator of MPL Consulting LLC. What that means is I help you get your business paperwork together. Things like if you need um, contracts for your business, if you need to register your business with the state, get an EIN number. By the way, I have the workshop on sale right now in my e-store, go check it out, link in bio. Uh, if you need to know how to hire employees, if you need brand protection through trademarks, copyrights, or patents, if you need uh, to know how to manage your money as an entrepreneur, I give you those foundational tools to help you be successful in business. Why am I qualified to do this? I'm so happy that y'all asked. I'm a, I'm a licensed attorney. I have been one for over 10 years, going on thir thir over 13 years now. I've started multiple businesses for myself and others, both online and offline. I've had many careers in the realms of the law, entrepreneurship, education, hospitality, and administrative support. And most important, I'm very passionate about making business and legal education as accessible to everybody as possible. Not everybody has the time, the money, or the desire to go to business school or to law school, but so many of you have amazing business ideas. And if you're going to make it in business, there's concepts that you need to know. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The government does not want to hear. I didn't know. The government is just going to say, give us our money. All right. Um, 
If you are interested in any of my business formation services, like a one hour strategy session, free 15 minute consultation for first time customers, my podcast, back episodes of MPL Legal Dish, my EIN workshop that we did on Monday that is on sale right now. You can find all of those things using the link in my bio, linktree forward slash MPL consulting firm, linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm, linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. All right, now let's get to the point of the show. The point of MPL Legal Dish is we take stories from the news and we pull out the business and legal concepts from them to help you be a better business owner. The way this goes is I'm going to describe the stories, but I'm also going to check in with you to make sure you're listening. I'm going to ask you questions. You're going to have to type some buttons in, so you need to pay attention. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments so I can address them, all right? We're going to get started in less than a minute. I'm waiting. All right. We're going to get started right now. The clock has hit 610 and we've got 20 minutes. So we're here till 630. All right. So the first story that we are covering, guys, has to do with the title of this broadcast. What is a slow fee? Well, apparently it is the newest craze from Apple. So Apple, we know that they are kings at creating their own market. They have swindled me. I have an iPhone and I never wanted one. Um, but Apple has filed a trademark for the term slow fee. So apparently at the iBox 11 unveiling, oh, if you have an iPhone, please give me an I in the comments. If you have an Android, give me an A, okay? Oh, God. Sorry, Facebook, that was my mama. Let me put this on Do Not Disturb. Okay, there we go. All right, so... Yes. What was I saying? Yes, I was saying if you have an iPhone, give me an I. If you have an Android, give me an A. All right. So we all know that iPhone, whenever they are bringing out a new phone, they do a whole event around it. Right. And the iPhone 11 just came out. And one of the things that uh, that they unveiled during the uh, during the iPhone event was the slow fee. And it's basically a short for a slow motion selfie. So the new iPhone 11 has like a really enhanced camera um, and it's able to take, you know, several frames and kind of create a slow motion view. I don't, I don't know all this technology stuff. All I know is there's something called a slow fee and Apple has trademarked it, right? And the, in ooh, excuse me, whew, I'm excited, y'all. <laughs> and the industry that they have trademarked it in um, is because remember, when you file a trademark for something, you can't just trademark it forever. It has to be in a particular industry. So Apple has trademarked the term slow fee for downloadable computer software for use in capturing and recording video. Now, basically what that breaks down to is Apple is not really concerned about um, people using the word slow fee. What they're more concerned about is people developing third party apps that are able to create the same effect as the slow fee. So if you think about the iPhone 7 and how they were able to kind of give you that um, that long range lens look where it was kind of like um, blurry in the back. Um, but you know, you were very clear in the front, right? I, any iPhone that you have, that's iPhone seven and later, they automatically have that. Right. But other phones. So I have an iPhone six. I don't have that capability, but there are apps that I can get from the app store and download that are able to create that effect for my phone. What Apple is trying to do is prevent these third party apps from happening and creating the slow fee. So they don't want any other, uh, any other companies, brands, whatever, to be able to say, well, you don't have the iPhone 11 or you have an older brand iPhone or you don't have an iPhone, you can still make a slow fee with this app. So Apple is out here trying to protect their name in these streets. So what I want to know from you is, um, I got a couple of questions. One, are you going to be getting the iPhone 11? Uh, two, what do you think of the slow fee? And three, do you think Apple should have taken this step to trademark the term slow fee? So I'm not sure who's here. It's either Purdy Brown Earthing or WJB Team. But whichever one of you is here, are you going to be getting the new iPhone 11? Um... Okay. 
And if you, um, and whether or not you're getting the iPhone 11, what do you think about the slow fee? Do you think it's a good addition? Do you think it's useful? And third, do you think Apple should have gone to the trouble of trademarking it? Talk to me, baby. Talk to me. All right. All right. So I will let you answer that. But um, while uh, before we move on to the next story, we do have a sponsor for today's show. Yesterday, we had the lovely shop best on the yard. Today, our um, sponsor is King Tax Services. So King Tax Services, she's not in the room right now, but she'll probably pop in later. But uh, King Tax Services is headed by its founder, Tanya King Horn. Um, she educates individuals and small businesses on savings and budgeting via financial tools, tips, and strategies. Follow her at King Tax Services 18 and catch her live tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you are having issues with savings and budgeting, Tanya is the person to go to. She is really great at getting your personal finances in order. Um, go follow King Tax Services 18. And thank you for being a sponsor of the show. All right. Okay. We're moving on to the next story. All right. Um, if you have ever heard of Monster Energy Drink, I want you to give me an M in the comments. Monster energy, monster energy. If you've heard of monster energy, I need a monster energy right now, guys, because I'm actually very tired. It's been a long week um, and I feel like I've been burning it at both ends. So if y'all could give me some energy back, that would really be great because that keeps me going. Um, all right. So Monster Energy, it's, 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 you know, an energy drink. There's tons of them out there. But Monster Energy comes up a lot on this show because Monster Energy likes to sue people. Uh, they sue anybody trying to use an M or anything clo color close to theirs. So much so that they're kind of a joke in the trademark world. Like they're known as like a joke and a bully. And today is no different. <clears throat> so Monster Energy is now trying to sue um, something called Monarch Energy. Um, I actually went to the site of this company and it, um, they had the logo, but uh, you know, there's nothing there. They're like, you know, the business, the, the site's coming soon, all this stuff. So basically Monarch Energy, um, it was started by a 21 year old man named Mason McGuire. And he started his company to, because he wanted, hi, Nicole Butler. He started this company because he wanted to help um, people with arthritis in their lower back, he, he wanted to provide some relief for them. So he has started, or he's trying to start this company called Monarch Energy. And he had a whole logo created. If you actually go to the link in my bio, hello, Travis Ivy. If you go to the link in my bio, you will see the two logos. I actually posted them and I asked if it was too close for comfort. And I got a 100% resounding no. Monster is known for suing anybody who tries to use the letter M, even if it doesn't look like theirs. So the Monarch Energy logo is literally a big black block M with like some black feathers. It's very dark. The Monster Energy M, it's bright green with like these weird things or whatever. But Monster is suing Monarch Energy because they're saying that the logo is too close to um, Monster. Now, this young man who started Monarch Energy, he did his research. He said he did his best to, um, to, to make his logo as far, hi, Kel 30 Wilson, as far from Monsters as as um as possible but he knew there was a possibility that monster might sue him because that is what monster does and the sad part about this is that this young man started this business because he wanted to help others who have the same issue that he has arthritis in their lower back and he has to take that money that he wanted to put in his business and put it towards these legal fees hello brandy brandy shannon i think that's how you say your name um all right. So this is the this is um, a big problem that's happening in the trademark world is you have a, some bigger companies that are using their, you know, they, because they have a lot of money and because they have a big name, they're bullying these smaller companies 
and kind of forcing them to not even start their businesses because they're tied up in these legal battles. So this young man who's 21, has his whole life ahead of him, wants to start this business, you know, stars in his eyes, thinks he's going to change the world, and he gets a lawsuit by Monster Energy. And he's saying that he doesn't have the money to create another logo, and he can't even afford the legal fees. So what is this guy to do? So... Why I bring this story up is because Monster is notorious for bullying people for their trademarks. And just because you do your research, even if you do are so diligent in preventing, trying to prevent yourself from infringing on somebody, somebody always wants a big piece of the pie. And some people are just going to try you, especially if you are a smaller business. But it is important that you stick to your guns, you know, maintain your documentation and do your best to make sure that you do your research as a business owner to make sure that your brand is different from somebody else's so they can't claim that it's anywhere near yours. If you go to my IG or Facebook stories, I want you to go and look at the logos and vote and tell me whether you think that the Monarch Energy logo is anywhere near the Monster Energy logo. You cannot miss it. All right. So we only have a few more minutes. We're getting off. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be able to cover this today. Um, but um, do I have any UFC fans in the room uh, before we go towards that? Let me read another ad from our sponsor. If you're a UFC fan, drop a U in the comments. Um, today's show is sponsored by King Tax Services. King Tax Services was founded by Tanya King Horn. She educates individuals and small businesses on saving and budgeting via financial tools, tips, and strategies. Follow her at King Tax Services 18. All right. And she's going live tonight at 9 p.m. to help y'all learn savings and budgeting. Thank you for the UDK Williams. All right. So, UFC. Um, you know, they, they do MMA fights and, and rounds and whatever UFC, they're getting up there. I actually have a theory that UFC and MMA may overtake boxing, um, sometime in the future. Let me know what you guys think about that. Okay. But, um, <clears throat> here's the issue. UFC is trying to trademark the phrase bad motherfucker or baddest motherfucker. I should say. Uh, the UFC is trying to trademark the term baddest motherfucker for an event name, um, a championship belt, and a line of toys. <laughs> so this is not the first time that you, the UFC is seeking trademarks. Obviously, they have a trademark for UFC. But um, when I was reading this uh, this story, they also had a follow-up as to, um, for some trademarks that the UFC has tried to file that have failed. If you were on here yesterday, uh, you remember that we that we went through the whole list of the, the names that Burger King used to troll McDonald's. Well, today we're going to go through the names that UFC tried to trademark and was denied by the USPTO. So before trying to trademark baddest motherfucker, UFC tried to trademark the number eight. They tried to trademark shaved heads. The word Fook, F-O-O-K, um, they tried to trademark wearing a suit without a tie. They tried to trademark the overhand right and Nick Diaz. Travis Ivy, we have actually talked about LeBron and Taco Tuesday on two episodes. If you watch a couple of the back episodes, um, I have one titled um, that that's titled about LeBron. So you can go check that episode out, but we have, we have gone over LeBron, but he was denied his trademark for taco Tuesday because somebody else already has that trademark in that field. And it's a popular term. Okay. But, um, aside from LeBron James, the UFC has been trying to trademark all this stuff and this is no different. So what do you think about them trying to trademark the term baddest motherfucker? Now, remember when I have talked to you guys about the case that went to the Supreme Court um, about the clothing line fucked because they were being denied because it was a vulgar term. But the Supreme Court ruled that you can't deny someone a trademark just because the word is vulgar or hi sincere 39, just because the word or the name is vulgar or offensive. So a lot of companies that are trying to trademark, it's all right, that are trying to trademark, you can watch the replay on YouTube. 
a lot of companies that are now trying to trademark, you know, offensive names are going to be able to use the fucked case because it is precedent, something that they call precedent. Whenever you are arguing a case in court, there's something that is called precedent. You can't just come out with a new argument. You need to back it up with some type of case. And fucked is going to be the precedent for any trademark case trying to trade any case trying to trademark an offensive word. So Travis Ivy thinks it's cool that the UFC is trying to trademark baddest motherfucker. So I want to ask you guys, if the UFC comes out with a championship event called baddest motherfucker, are y'all going to watch? I like the UFC. I like MMA. So I will watch. Um, but what do you think about them trying to trademark this phrase for, for a UFC event and a championship? And a line of toys. Who's going to buy a line of toys called Baddest Motherfucker for Kids? DK Williams said, Vic, Vince McMahon is Dana White's spirit animal when it comes to the attempt of trademarking names, words, and phrases. Huh. You know, I don't, I don't know. I know Vince McMahon runs the WWE, but I don't really know much about him outside of his persona when he's like, you know, doing stuff in the ring. Um... From people, for people who I know who are in MMA, if they're not like affiliated with the UFC, most MMA fighters I don't think really like Dana White like that. Um, I don't know, but you know, make your money, man. But yeah, so UFC is out here trying to trademark bad words. <laughs> so keep an eye out. Um, I have one more story that ugh, this is very long, and we don't have a lot of time. So I'm going to save this for tomorrow. DK Williams said he's the reason most former wrestlers cannot use their wrestling name after leaving WWE. Yes, DK Williams. I've talked about this. So when anytime. So guys, those are the end of our stories. But I want to talk about this comment that DK Williams made. So whenever you have seen WWE wrestlers in movies and stuff, when they use their names to be in movies, they have to cut a check to WWE, right? And they can't take those names when they go. A lot of times WWE will try and trademark those names themselves. That's why you see Dwayne Johnson. He used to go by The Rock whenever he was in his movies. Dwayne Johnson has dropped The Rock because WWE, I believe they own that term. And Dwayne Johnson wanted to stop cutting them a check. And Dwayne Johnson has done enough work. That happens to music artists too. Right. And Dwayne Johnson has done enough work that you recognize his name without his WWE name. Um, so UFC, I don't know if they're going to be as bad as WWE, but I know that Dana White likes his money. Um, so we'll see what happens with them. All right. So those are the stories that we covered today. We talked about Apple trademarking the slow fee. Um, hi, I am natural. I am natural HB. Um, if you guys are planning on getting the iPhone 11, um, oh, he corrects people when they call him the rock. I did not even know that. Okay. Good to know. So we talked today about Apple trying to trademark the slow fee. It's the new feature of the iPhone 11. I don't think that's a big draw for, at least for me, for a phone monster energy is trying to sue a 21 year old boy and UFC is trying to trademark baddest motherfucker. <laughs> So um, if you guys have any questions about these stories, please, we've got a few, um, like three minutes. Please drop them in the comments. I also want you to go to uh, my stories and vote on the pictures in the stories. DK Williams said, lastly, baddest motherfucker should be reserved for Sam Jackson. No, just motherfucker or motherfucking Sam Jackson. He's, he doesn't say baddest. He just like, it's too many motherfucking slaves, snakes on this motherfucking plane. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he doesn't do bad as motherfucker right but yeah so if you have any questions about um these stories please drop them down let's talk about them about the apple slow fee about the ufc and their trademark or about monster trying to sue this 21 year old boy because he used an m go vote in the comments and i also um make sure that you are here tomorrow so we can finish our stories um, I'm also thinking that the 20 minute format might be a little bit too short and we might have to extend to 30 minutes starting next week. Um, because I do want, I, I, you know, I do realize that some people may come in late and I want to give time for, you know, introductions and also to give you, give you some time to get comfortable. So 
while you guys are here, you let me know. Do you want um, do you want me to stick with the 20 minute format or do you want me to go to a 30 minute format? Anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes. Um, while you do that, um, if you do not have an EIN number for your business, you need one. Go pick up the EIN workshop. It is on sale right now for twenty nine dollars. Um, if you are, want a consultation with me, I offer free 15 minute consultations for first time clients. So you can also book that at the link in my bio link tree forward slash MPL consulting firm. We will be here tomorrow at 6 p.m. Sincere 39 said 30 minutes. Hello, MBA 14. Um, 30 DK Williams said 30 minutes. All right. So we are going to be here tomorrow. We're going to try out the 30 minutes. It's Friday, but you know, I'm going to be here because I love y'all. Um, and we're going to talk about some more of these stories. I have a story about um, a shoe company that's suing another one for stealing their sustainable shoe. I've got one about um, Off-White is trying to trademark the word product bag. I have, what's the other stories I got? We got one, Walmart is trying to get out of their $100 million uh, ruling, the money that they got to pay, Olaplex. OSU, apparently there's more than one company that has the word the registered. And the last thing I want to talk to you guys about, I think that was it. But yeah, we've got stories to cover. I think we can do it in 30 minutes tomorrow. So I'm going to do my best because my goal is that I don't leave any stories that I have for the week till the next week because I want them to stay fresh for y'all. Okay. But join me back here 6 p.m. tomorrow or 6 ish as long as my computer is co cooperating. Um, thank you all for your feedback. Thank you for the information about The Rock and the UFC and Dana White, because y'all put me on. Thank you very much. That's why we do this, so we can learn from each other. It's an ecosystem. Um, have a wonderful evening. and I